Hello, hello and welcome friends. Welcome to another uh, interesting unboxing. I've just returned from the post office with this little pack. Let me tell you what I paid. So for the content and the shipping cost, I paid around 260 lays or approximately 52.88 euros or 56.34 US dollars. And without further delay, I have here my uh, little knife. Here is uh, the address, guys. So probably I should uh, get rid of that right now. I don't know if this cuts so well, but I'm trying to cut it as good as I can. Okay. So this should open quite nice. I'm sorry I've ruined the box, but it is what it is. This. Okay. And um, this in the content. Right. Uh, the first, I have one pen here. Let me check out quite well. So this is just wrapping paper, I think, here. Oh, another cap. Okay. Wrapping paper. And here another part. Okay. So this was the box. This is just wrapping paper. And let's see. Here I think I have other a uh, one instrument here. This is it. Let's check out the others. So right here. There was another one here. Okay. I will definitely check all uh, the small pieces. Oh, other two pieces right here. <laughs> so, it is what it is, guys. And another cap here. Okay. And I think that this is all the content. A small pencil right over here and yes i believe that this is the uh, content you can see lots of uh, parts for vintage pens let me gentle zoom on them okay and i hope you can see them let me start with uh, this one you probably heard agfa this was a photographic firm from uh, Germany, Aqua. Probably this is a promotional little pencil. Quite interesting. So I'm not so sure who produced it. Probably Faber Castell, if I'm not mistaken, but uh, it could be another German pencil manufacturer. So this here. Let me see what else. So this is definitely a spare part. Judging by the way the cap um, is. I presume it's from a 1930s German pen. Unfortunately, we have a little crack over here. I hope that my camera will zoom on it. And you probably can see right over here. And it ends in this breathing hole. So this is a nice, nice little cap, but uh, we'll see what else do I have. What I have here is an interesting Mont Blanc, as you can see. It appears to be another cap. is missing the, the clip and the logo with the Mont Blanc. It has two lines here, and I guess it's also from the 1930s or maybe old 1940s. Uh, nice cap over here. I have what I believe it is a piston filler. And let me see. 
Yes, it is definitely a piston filler, quite, quite interesting. Probably also from the 1930s. I have this part which I recognize, and this is an ink window. Too bad, it is definitely broken, and this is a gripping uh, section, and probably also from the 1930s or 1940s. I have also this, which seems to be a barrel. It's slightly deformed, probably a celluloid barrel. And again, uh, some kind of uh, mechanism. I'm not so sure if the barrel is from this. Maybe it is from this. So, uh, different, different parts, guys. I have also this, and this is also a barrel and the ink window is on this part and we have some patterns as you can see i'm trying to see if we have some engravings on it or right over here and and again judging by the way it is built I presume it's from a German pen from the 1930s. And again, a nice interesting spare, spare, spare part, guys. Okay. And now let's move on to, let's say, uh, this one. And uh, we have a Mont Blanc cap. I'm not so sure that if the cap is from uh, this pen. Well, it could be, yes. You can see the beautiful way the cellul celluloid material has this wonderful transparency to it. And if I'm not mistaken, the name of this Mont Blanc should be engraved right here. So we have a Mont Blanc. And if I'm not mistaken, it, uh, it is a 3, 4, 2. And yes, it is a 3, 4, 2. Let me zoom on it, guys, for you to see better. So, three, four, two. And if I'm not mistaken, I think I have a three, four, two. Okay. The cap unscrews like this. It reveals the ink window. And let me see how about the nib. Well, interesting, is not fitted with the original nib. But I believe that it is fitted with a uh, gold nib. And let me zoom on it so, uh, to see what kind of a nib we have here. So definitely a 585 14 carat nib. And it appears we have dictator. Dictator on it. Or a dictator <laughs> in uh, English interesting for uh, Mont Blanc I should test it I don't know if it's in gold but judging on the um, on the engravings 14 carat 585 this is definitely a gold name I'm quite curious to see if we have a flexible one uh, quite a flexible gold name so this is a wonderful wonderful pen Again, I need to see if the piston is functional and uh, for that I probably need to turn this. This is a blind cap and it reveals the piston and uh, let's see. Yes, it is broken probably. Certainly it will need this to be replaced, but the celluloid, it is not deformed. So let me tell you about uh, this piece, guys. Sometimes the corkscrew here, uh, it um, in time, if it's not replaced, it can deform this celluloid material. But the celluloid material seems to be quite, quite in good order. So, probably the only one that I have with this uh, transparency of the celluloid. So, a wonderful, wonderful piece. Too bad it doesn't have its original nib. But uh, I believe it's still a great, great find at this price. So I did not pay a large sum of money for it, guys. Let me put back the cap and let's move on to the other items of uh, this unboxing. 
this i think is a chinese pan yes and uh, we can uh, recognize the producer it's a golden star chinese manufacturer let me see it has this hooded nib of course this model has um, lots of design features from the classic parker 51 and interesting here we have youth youth 303 so probably the cap is uh, not original to the youth uh, pan we have a golden star cap so a uh, golden star cap and the youth fountain pen some of uh, franken parts are uh, in this pen and i left my favorite at the end just look at this wonderful wonderful celluloid and I'm not so sure i think but i can um, be mistaken that this is a Mont Blanc, a Danish production of the Mont Blanc. Uh, unfortunately, no um, hallmarks to identify this. No Mont Blanc logo here. But uh, judge by... Oh yes, I have something to identify it. So right over here, we have DRP and this is the number. So this was a trademark back in the 1930s, the 1940s, and the beginning of the 1950s. And uh, I'm not so sure, but uh, it, this was a registered trademark in the Reich or in Germany at that time. This is a wonderful celluloid. Too bad it likes this fake cap over here, but I think it can be easily replaced. So look at this wonderful, wonderful celluloid. And the cap on screws like this, it reveals the ink window. And too bad, the original feeder is missing, as you can see. Some, somebody, someone broke it. And probably they tried to take out the gold nib. And speaking about the gold nib, this is a beautiful, beautiful Mont Blanc. Four and a half, 40 carat. Four and a half, I think it is some kind of a standard uh, that was imprinted on the Mont Blanc's nib. I don't know too much details about this. Probably you can help me in the comments. I'm not so sure this... Uh, nib could uh, be repaired but you can see it it is in terrible terrible shape let me see if the piston is still uh, so no the piston is not functional tell me what you think guys what model this mont blanc could be i like to hear uh, your comments and um, tell me what uh, you think about this lot I certainly think I did uh, okay. So for around 50 euros, I got some interesting, interesting vintage parts. And some of them are f from a well-known Mont Blanc manufacturer. So this was my unboxing, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've enjoyed it, please subscribe to my uh, channel and uh, support my activity. I want to wish you to have a wonderful day wherever you are, my friends. Bye-bye. And God bless you all.